The first thing you're going to want to do is go into Krita, open a new file, and then you're going to change the width to 500 and the height to 500 as well. This way it'll create a smaller um, canvas for you to start with so you kind of know what the image is going to look at when you make it even smaller. And I make the resolution 70. Go ahead and click create. And now you have your canvas. Um, it is going to be transparent already, but you can work off of the white background so that you know what you're working with. Um, you can start by drawing your own creation for your emote, or if uh, you want to rely a little bit more on pre-made images, you can head over to Google. Um, for example, if I wanted a cartoon penguin, I can search it, go to images, filter, usage rights, free to modify, share, and use commercially. And then um, additionally, you can go over here to the type and you can click transparent. That might limit you even further. Um, I will show you how to um, do a transparent or a non-transparent image uh, just in case you click one with a background. So if you see the background disappear once you click it, that means it is a transparent image. Um, I'll just click through a couple of them, just see. Let me take this filter off and show you how to get rid of a background image. So this one still kept its white background. So I'm going to show you how to get rid of the background just in case you want a very specific image. So you're going to right click, press copy, go back to Krita, and then you can control V to add it in and you can click as web. Uh, right now it's blending in with the, ba the white background, but if I go over here and I remove it, you can see it still has a white background. In order to get rid of this, you can click your masking tool, switch over to Big Paint. It has uh, the tools that I prefer, but additionally you can click through this and see if there are any other um, types that you like. It'll offer different layouts of the tools, but for me I'm going to use Big Paint. So I'm going to close out of that and then you can go to your magic selector tool. You can make sure your image is selected and then click this side and you can see it outlines it. This is what I'm going to get rid of. So after you click it, you can then click delete and then you can click on the other side and you can click delete. Now I go up to select and I deselect and now I have gotten rid of the background of the penguin. Um, there might be a little bit around the edges. If you notice that you can go in with the eraser tool and just kind of clean that up. A lot of times the images that have just plain backgrounds they will delete automatically. So that's how you get rid of a background if you're using a non-transparent image. However, I prefer the transparent ones off of Google, so I'm going to go ahead and show you. It's the same process, but I'm just going to bring it in and it won't have a background to get rid of. So for this, I'm actually going to right click and I'm going to remove this layer. Then I'm going to go back to Google. And I'm going to change my filters to transparent. And I still have on the free to modify, share, and use commercially. So I am going to select this guy, copy image, go back to Krita. You can control V or you can um, right click to paste it as web. Make it big. Make sure you are highlighting the layer that you want to work with. You can click your, uh, click this tool right here. It's going to resize it for you. And now the goal with this, uh, when you're creating emotes, is you want it to be as big as you can. So when the emote shrinks itself down, it's going to uh, lose a lot of its size. So the important part is to make this as big as possible, even if that means cutting off different things. So for example, 
Um, if I wanted him, if I just wanted this penguin as my emote, I'd probably leave it at about this size. And that's how he would look as the emote. Um, it's up to you if you want a background around it. I don't particularly prefer it because then it boxes out your emote and it doesn't look, um, I guess, as as good as a lot of the emotes look. Like when I see a square emote with a background, it just kind of looks like a chunky picture. Um, but for this, it would just be showing this little guy as a penguin. Um, if you did want to add things to him, you can. So I'm going to show you a little bit how the layers work. So uh, to resize him, you can click this tool again. Looks like a picture frame over in the corner. Um, make him a little bit smaller. And um, you can put him in, uh, put him more inside of the canvas. So if I wanted to add a word across him, you can um, come over here. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this layer and I'm going to add a text. So uh, you click your text box in the top left hand corner, then you can drag and um, let go. It will then open this up and you can have it and you can type in here whatever you wanted. So if you specifically wanted um, a hype emote, you could type it out, uh, you can bold it, you can change uh, what type of font it is. I do like a little bit of a thicker font when it comes to writing words. And then you can click save, close. Now I have this tiny box over here. I can um, make sure your text layer is clicked and then you can make it bigger. And it will look distorted until um, until you actually click off of it. And then you can see it's right there. There's my hype. And I don't want it that color, so I'm going to go ahead and um, change its color. So over here, you can pick whatever color you want. Just remember that you have to think about what it's going to look like when you're on Twitch and you're submitting an emote. You don't want to have two... Um, dark of a color if people have background uh, the black background and you want you don't want it too light when people have a white background and I'll show you some other ways you can edit your text to make it pop out um, but go ahead and pick a color that works for you so I'm gonna go with this orange and then I'm gonna save and close and now I have this um, so within your text or usually within any of the images on here you can click this um, and shape it however you want. So make sure you're on your vector layer. You can also rename this layer. When you start to make, um, when you go more in depth, you'll wanna name them so you know it's easier to click on. And by doing that, you just right click, go to properties, and you can go over here and you can just type hype. So when you look over here, you can see that, hey, this is my hype. You could do it for your penguin. Go to properties. Um, this will make it easier when you're going back and forth in between your layers by naming them. So now I know I want to I want to edit my penguin. I'm going to click penguin. I want to edit my hype. I'm going to click hype. So once you're over here on your hype, you can go back to this tool over here and then you can move it around as you need. So you can uh, turn it left and right. You can um, make it bigger, make it smaller. It's up to you, honestly, how you want to do it. I'm going to leave it like that for now and I'm going to show you some additional things that you can do to make your text pop out. So you can right click on the hype and you can go to, actually I lied, click on hype, go over to your layer and then click layer style. And this is going to give you a lot of options to really um, make the text look how you want. So um, there's all kinds of things stroke will stroke will give you an actual outline so um, you can you can make it pop by giving it an outline you can make it pop by doing shadows anything like that will make it stand out another great thing you can do is that if you like specific colors within your image you can change those colors with the eyedropper tool um, so let me go back so you click stroke you want to make sure it's actually checked um, for example, if I click Pattern Overlay 
and it's not checked, it's not actually going to update this image. And so I move my box over to the right so that I can see what I'm doing to the image. So let me go back to stroke. Um, I wanted this specific black or um, charcoal-ish color of this penguin. So I'm going to go to color and then I'm going to go to the eyedropper tool and I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click that. So it's going to give that exact color of that background and it's going to change this outline to match that exactly. So you can change uh, the opacity. You can actually make it completely dark so it's not see-through. And now I have that same color that's at the top up here. It's up to you. You don't have to do that. If you prefer the deeper color over here, you can uh, change that color. You click color, eyedropper, go over here, and that's more of a black. And then we got our um, outline changed to black. Um, also, the um, beveling and the, the emboss is another great trick to really make your um, text stand out. So it gives it more of like a chiseled look and it looks almost 3D like it's sticking out. So this is another great thing to play with. All of these tools um, and all of these styles, uh, you can go back and forth and just play with whatever works best for you. And so you can click OK. Um, and then if you just want to make this bigger altogether, you can resize your penguin, you can resize your text, and Also remember, um, well I didn't mention this, but it depends on where each item is. So if I had the hype under the penguin, you wouldn't be able to see it. So if something isn't sitting how you would like, check the layering to make sure it's where you want it to be. All you have to do is click and drag to change it. Um, if there was something that you weren't sure about and you just wanted to pause on, you can click the little button over here to take it off for now, try something different, then you can add it back. Um, if I wanted to add a background just for editing purposes, I could turn that back on. Regardless, this is still a transparent image. I am going to make my hype just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to click on that layer. I'm going to make sure this tool over here is clicked. And then I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. I want to get it as close to the outside of this box as possible because this is the size of the emote. Once we scale it down, um, let me see, there we go. Um, this is exactly what the size it will be. All right, so I can go back to my selector tool, see if that's what I want. It's not what I want. So I'm going to try and make it a little bit smaller. I have to go back to this tool and make it smaller. All right, select your tool, preview it. If that's what you like, then you want to move forward. Um, I'm just going to keep moving. I'm going to move forward just for video purposes. So now it's time for exporting the image. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to click on the image. You want to go over here, right click flatten image yes and then now you should have uh, one file uh, I do want to note that before you do that if you plan on editing or having the ability to edit this emote again um, you want to save it at the size and with the layers already in it uh, so for example um, go back to edit if you already did this undo flatten image so now you still have your layers over here go up to file um, you want to save as and keep it as the Krita document and that just means you can open it in Krita it will have all the layers and you'll be able to edit it in the future you'll have like your your base copy of it um, I'm not going to keep this so I'm just going to cancel for now uh, you're going to right click we're going to flatten that image and then we're going to go to image and we're going to scale image to new size. And for an emote, the size is 112 by 112. Okay. And now you have your emote. And it has the checkered background, but it's transparent. So when you do uh, go to save this, save it as a PNG. Penguin hype. Press OK. 
and now you have your emote that you can upload. It will have a clear background and it will only show the penguin and the hype.